Welcome, everyone, on this episode of Go Mad. Doug and I are here at NRB, National Religious Broadcasters Convention. And we, so if you hear that little buzz in the background, that's people all around it's us. All of Brad's fans clamoring <laughs> to get his. Wait, you told me both that of was them. about Yeah, your both of them. Autograph. They're right they make there. They a lot of noise for two people. They do. I, I pay we, them extra. <laughs> we are so excited because today. We get to talk with Ted Bear, the founder and president of Movie Guide. Ooh. Movie Guide is such an amazing ministry. If, I don't know about you, Brad, but there are so many choices of what to watch these days. I, especially if you have streaming services, I just oh, yeah. sit there paralyzed, going, "Why do I watch?" And, and what you haven't okay? watched what's... a movie in years because of that. <laughs> <Now that's... laughs> I just stare at the screen and keep punching the remote while my wife Anna gets more and more frustrated. But today, on the podcast, you're going to hear a lot of laughs. You're going to hear a lot of wisdom from oh, yeah. Ted. Not just here is what to watch, don't watch this, but actually some great stories and some great ideas about how we can, yes, be better ambassadors for Christ based on our choices. He's got some pretty amazing stories to tell, some he pretty does. sobering statistics, and you're going to get to hear it all on the other side of Jesse here. So everyone, let's go, go mad. mad. Hey friends, thanks for joining us again on Go Mad. We hope you're having an awesome summer. As you heard, Doug and Brad got to chat at NRB with Ted Bear, founder of Movie Guide. Ted offers a unique perspective as someone who's lived in the Hollywood scene for pretty much his whole life. And he offers valuable insight on how to make a difference in the world that you find yourself in. Be sure to check out movieguide.org after the episode. Ready? Let's go mad. So we are thrilled to be here at NRB, National yep. Religious Broadcasting, um, a great conference, and we're here with Ted Bear, the head of Movie Guide. Most this, is, people, this is a special this guest. Is pretty this, exciting. Is, this, I, is, this is very exciting. Um, most folks who are listening are going to know exactly what Movie Guide is. Anytime I'm considering anything media-wise for my family, that is my first stop. Not just because there's there are websites where you can go that will say, you know, put in black and white, this is how many swear words there are and this is what's happening in front of you. But Movie Guide is real unique in that it also shares the idea of what's going on, the themes of what's happening and what, especially your young person, but we all have to guard our hearts, so it's for adults as well. What the movie is going to be trying to communicate to you. So I was talking with my brother-in-law last night, and we were talking about how we have these movies that we grow up with that we are, are just so passionate about. 80s movies. 80s it's movies. Just... And, and we were talking about how we have this great nostalgia for them, and we said, I can't wait to show our kids these movies. So we showed them to them, and we forget. We're, we're listening to her like, oh, my goodness, I forgot all of the sexual stuff in here i forgot about all this profanity for me it was back to the future and i'm i'm goonies I'm putting, is another I'm, goonies, goonies is, another is another one i was shocked start by showing them to to my children and Man. oh my goodness almost immediately right, guys we're gonna just have to do this later i think but dad there's your story if you could share a little bit about uh, your story with us because from what i understand you got an ear with Hollywood folks, the folks that make these movies, and said, look, if you're going to make something that's supposed to be for a family, let's actually make it for a family. So can you help us understand a little bit about how Movie Guide came about in your heart for it? You just asked me a very long set of questions. <laughs> <laughs> how much time do we have to talk about that? Uh, number one, Movie Guide is built to help parents and help children develop discernment. And by unpacking all those things that you we're shocked by mm. and helping people understand the worldview and we have 150 criteria i was head of a department at city university of new york in the late 70s we got 70 62 professors together developed the first media literacy course i tested it mm. at a local church so we we have a system and i've written about 40 books and half of them have been teaching our children to be culture wise and media wise so they don't succumb to the media mm. because the average child by the time they're 17 years old spends over 65,000 hours of the media wow. 12,000 hours in school 2,000 hours of their parents <laughs> and if they go to church every week and it's a normal 
regular church, not a on fire church. They that once a week for one hour, eight hundred hours by the time you're wow, so who good. has the dominance here? Who's yeah. got the influence in, in that? And you know, I grew up in the industry and my parents were stars. My father was a big Hollywood star. He won the box office award in nineteen thirty six. <laughs> we didn't have the Academy Award until a little bit after that. So that was the award that everybody wanted, the number one box office. And then after World War II, he starred on Broadway. And I grew up, you know, I summarize it to be funny as a left-wing commie pinko rat. I mean, <laughs> literally, I was a left-wing commie pinko rat. So please forgive me, guys. <laughs> and my mother died when I was young, so I was really bad. And then um, four women had their eye on my father. One of them was single, and she gave she, they all came to Christ through Billy Graham, and they'd take him wow. to Christian meetings. And I'd go along to protect him and keep him from becoming a crazy Christian. Yeah. And uh, I'd walk out and huff and puff because I'd gone to Dartmouth and Cambridge and all the... I, I've got three advanced degrees. Wow, my goodness. Doctorate. So, I, you know, academics were easy. I, the reason I went to to University of Munich and, and France is because I said, there are pretty girls in France. I'll go to school. <laughs> <laughs> there are pretty girls in England. So I'll go to England. That's why I picked up the guitar. Right. Ted, there you go. Well, I, I understand. It was fun. And um, so they, they take, and one of the women noticed that I just didn't like it. Hmm. You know, the world has, I mean, Dartmouth and all those Ivy League colleges have set you against, you know, faith i mean that's what they do they tell you it's a myth they tell you everything else yeah so one woman was so smart and i asked her years later would you intend to do this she said read the bible and every week my father would say audrey wants you to read the bible have you read the Bible? i'm not going to read the bible but you told her you would i was lying i'm not going to read the bible so after months of this arguing i started i'll read the little short part the new testament and i started reading matthew and you know from your life that about 60 people, 60% of the people come to Christ by reading the Bible. If you're mm. embarrassed to talk about it, give them the gospel of John or right, the gospel man. of Matthew, right. and it, it'll bring them to Christ. So I said, this is a true story. I'd always been told it was a myth. This is something that's real. Jesus is real. And mm. he'll give me John 10, 10, a more abundant life. I got to get, get this. So I went to somebody's house. I said, I'd like to accept Jesus. My wife looked sick because she abandoned the Catholic Church. and be, I didn't have the Catholic Church in the background. And she'd become a feminist and went to Rice Architecture, was on the cover of Mademoiselle and all this stuff. Oh, wow. So then, you know, she came to Christ five years later. It was not easy. <laughs> and then my father came to Christ seven years after I came to Christ. Wow. And it's, it, the whole family was swept up in our own little revival. And I'd grown up in the industry. I'd financed five feature films, Oliver Stone's first film. Mm. And I, when I came to Christ, I said, I made these lousy films. What can I do to help people? So wow. we started doing Movie Guide, and we started writing books on teaching your kids to be media-wise. What year this. was Movie Guide started? Movie Guide started in 1985. Wow. The ministry started, you, that's a good question, uh, in 1978. And I was head of the organization that did The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe on CBS television. Really? We, wow. we had 37 million viewers. But I said, I don't need the Emmy Award. I never collected it. They hmm. con told me years later that I could still get it. My father got a lot of awards. I'm not here in it for awards. I teach people how to make movies. I teach people how to teach their kids to be media-wise. So I see myself as just a servant which wow. is what minister means. I just serve people, that's all. And this is just a tool to help people. So 1985 was, uh, I, I remember some of the movies around that time. Was there anything in particular, any movie or movies that triggered, hey, we something's got to be done to inform people more about what's out there? Well, to put it in another context, uh, in the beginning, there was only one movie with positive Christian content, and it was Chariots of Fire. Oh, mm -hmm. so, which watch is that with my movie. kids. Love it. That and theme I'm, song's going to be in my head the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. so, and he's just, you know, wonderful. And I met, you know, the writer and everybody else in that because I was in the industry. And then it went on that, that I got a call from Bill Bright. You knew Bill Bright. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Jesus of Nazareth was preparing to come on CBS. Yeah. And he said, help, you know, they don't have a resurrection. Bill was 
<laughs> you know, really wonderful. So I go and meet with Vincenzo Labella, and, and uh, we go to the Vatican, and I get them to put a resurrection. And I show my class how we structured a resurrection when they didn't have the footage. And everybody thinks it's a resurrection. It's actually scenes... I just revealed the trick. <laughs> okay, movies are tricks. They, you, you believe that they're Give real. Give away the ending. They're yeah. not real. So we, I got caught up in that, but then I said, there's got to be, you've got to reach a lot of people. Right now we reach, um, in January, 83 million people a month that were Amazing. really strong Praise God. movie guide people. Now it's up to 89 million. And I don't do anything to do that. I mean, I'm talking to you, and I'm sure somebody's going to listen and go to movieguide.org. But it, I hope so. I'm... I just see this growth because people like it. It's it's good and it's helpful, and we're here to help them. Ted, so we like taking road trips. Our family like taking road trips, and I we got this Ford Expedition. Love your Ted is like, where are you going with this? We're not talking cars <laughs> today. I love driving this thing, but it has. I've terrified my kids a couple times because I'll start changing lanes, and they're like, Dad, there's a car there. Uh, it's got an awful blind spot, so it doesn't matter how many times I try to look. I'm still going to miss this. the little VW. So, here's my question. Here's here's the amazing segue here. Um, I feel like entertainment is is maybe American Christians' greatest spiritual blind spot. There's so much power in stories being told well. Um, we we love talking about on our podcast our ambassadorship for Jesus. We're representing him wherever we go with our coworkers, our family, especially our children. Um, so how does what we're putting in our hearts, what, because obviously when, when a story is told powerfully, it's uh, Leonard Bernstein said what he loved about music was it bypassed the brain and went straight to the heart. That's the whole point. It's an emotive medium. It exactly. doesn't teach you... LM learning. I teach cognitive development theory, media literacy. Yeah. I was head of a department at Berkeley. Talk about crazy. And, um, <laughs> yeah, but the fact of the matter is, you know, because I deal with a lot of all of this uh, academic stuff, it, most, if not all, psychiatrists would tell you, for those of you out there, that once you get the image in your mind, in fact, I show clips about this from Oxford, you don't get the image out. Mm. Yes. So what you see is people who got an image of sex or violence. About 7% of the kids want to respond to the violence. About 30% want to respond to the sex. Really? About 60% of the women want to go shopping. Wow. <laughs> I like that. There we go. Yeah, okay. So movies touch the heart, but the person has to be susceptible to then go off. I mean, I just talked to somebody here who son went was a wonderful son he had you know the hebrew name of jesus and he was he went bonkers and he went to kansas from here and got and stole a couple of cars and broke into a home and blah 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 but mm. you know all of that gets the media because he's he's susceptible mm. that and some people are not susceptible which is another problem and they say well i saw this movie it didn't bother me yeah yeah well, right. that, that doesn't matter i mean some people can drink alcohol and look like they're sober and some people get drunk you've got to know your kids but you ask the most important question the psychiatrist said you can't remove it but god says if you turn to him yes. that he will cleanse your mind yes. and remove uh -huh. that image and you will be a new mind in christ yes so once you become a new mind in christ it's god living in you that takes over and helps you live through these temptations and that's what they are we're sin nature temptations romans 12 the renewing of our mind praise god that we can hit the reset button he can he can yeah. help reset our minds and i love that perspective because the reality is is that all the time we hear people in the body of christ who love jesus they they truly passionately love jesus but there's com this compartmentalizing mm. of it doesn't matter it's not impacting me and you just completely debunk that with with i mean it's not only does the Word of God support that it impacts us, science supports that it impacts us, all that the wiring of our brains, it shows that it's really important that with the old computer terminology, garbage in, garbage out. And if we're not good stewards of what we are watching, you mentioned John 10.10 10 before, and entertainment, the enemy roams around 
like a roaring lion yeah. to steal. Seeking. Yeah, mm. exactly. And then once he steals, he's got to kill so there's no evidence and mm. destroy all yes. the evidence. So oh, I like the way you put that's that, Axe. That's he really does good. What he does. Well, and what I love about Movie Guide is, as you were saying, Doug, it's the content side of it. So what I've been able to do, because you guys have a great app, too. Uh, so, Thank you. folks, make sure you movieguide.org or the app Movie Guide. Download that because it's really easy to find the movie. And you guys are always adding to it. Even older movies, you guys are always adding things. And I've been able to, especially with my oldest daughter, say, hey, there, this is something you'd like to watch. Go research it and let's let tell me what you see. And so it's not just about parents using it because, like you said, Doug, it is adults need to be using this too. I use it for myself and my wife and I use it. But you can start showing your children how to have discernment. And, and I that's love the whole that. point. That's exactly what we want to do. In one interview, um, I'm probably going to see the person tonight when. I was on a caller called in and said my daughter wanted to go see this movie that her whole, you know, school class wanted to see it. It was a funny movie. And, mm. uh, but, yeah. you know, some of those funny movies, they get pretty bawdy. Yeah. But she read the review and we put in the content section uh, that, you know, the animal's head got knocked off. It's supposed to be a joke. Right. But right. it's in the movie. Right. And they use it as a basketball or hockey puck or whatever. <laughs> and she said, no, I love animals. I don't want to see it. And her yes. friend said, "You come on, we're all going to see it. And you probably know the movie. But anyway, and there are lots of these movies that if you help the children understand, in fact, if they develop the standards, I teach all this, and you say, okay, your standard is that you don't want to see animals harmed, Right. Well, then you don't want to go to this movie. Your standard is that you don't want to see women harmed. Then you don't want to go. Your standard is that you don't want to see people blown to pieces and, you know, all yeah. the rest of it. Well, then you, you read about it and you say, I made a decision. This isn't what I want to see. Unfortunately, Christians go to movie, more movies than non-Christians. That's the research. Really? For every ticket, Is that right? For every ticket that a non-Christian buys, the Christians buy 2.3 times. Is that right? Yeah, wow. 2.3 tickets. And um, they're the biggest film-going audience. And I'm trying to figure that out. I mean, I think part of it before COVID was they mm. thought, well, I can go to this movie and it's safer than sitting at home and watching TV because then you got the ads and all the trash that comes at you. But even when you go to a movie, you're you're seeing something just like you said with Back to the Future. Yeah, that's got content that you didn't expect. So we try to help people. So, Dad, I'm 12 years old, and I don't think I've ever wanted to see a movie more in my life. Rambo. Rambo comes out. All my friends, 12, 13, they're all seeing Rambo. Or they say they are. And I'm like, Rocky's in this movie. I have to go see Rambo. <laughs> so. I was bugging my dad about it every day. Dad, can I, I want to see Rambo. I want to see Rambo. So I remember we're out in the backyard, and, and he, he surprised me. He says, okay, Doug, here's the deal. Now, I didn't realize he was using psychology at this point. I'm too young to realize this. But he says, looks me in the eye, Doug, I trust you. I love you. I support your decisions. So sure. I will let you decide <laughs> to go see it because I so trust your judgment. And then, of course, I didn't want to see it at all because I don't, <laughs> I don't want to disappoint Dad. That's so beautiful. It, it's all about... What a good dad. Oh, yeah, what a good absolutely. dad. Well, he was serious about, about winning our hearts, loving Jesus versus behavior. Because, I mean, when you're two years old, you have to try to control your kid's behavior. But at some point, before they're 18, before they move out of the house, if there's not a transfer... Uh, from behavior to I just love God, and and I'm winning a heart. I, I bring that up because I'm curious if there is a personal grid that you have to determine what you're gonna li watch mm. to what I watch, listen to, um, because you know the rating system. Anyone who trusts the rating system is in trouble. I mean, yeah. you you go and well, oh, it's PG and and the rating system was an evil ploy okay. before the rating system. When the churches were involved through the Protestant Film Office and the Jewish Defense League and the Catholic Legion of Decency, you know, which have been all mocked in time, but they kept movies clean from 1933 to 1966. What I mean by clean, they didn't have foul language, you didn't have 
nudity, sex, the violence was not porno violence or whatever you right. have today. And then they withdrew, and Lyndon Johnson's press secretary, because people stopped going to movies, went from 44 million weekly attendance to 17 million. People weren't going to movies. The movie industry panicked. We don't have standards anymore. They gave up the standards. Hmm. And the standards were that you wouldn't portray violence in a way that a young, susceptible person would commit violence. You wouldn't portray sex in such a way that... So the standards were very positive, hmm. but they all fell apart. The church actually left Hollywood. Hollywood didn't leave the church. The head of mm. Paramount Pictures, oh, wow. a Jewish man, said, if you leave Hollywood, it's like taking the salt for the meat. The meat's going to rot. Mm. Within three years, it rotted. Wow. And this guy, Lyndon Johnson's corrupt press, press secretary, came up with a rating system. But the rating system... Think about it. I mean, you you love road trips, right? Right. So you're driving through a town and you see a blinking red light where you know what, you know, I mean, on a store, not on the, you know, you get, oh, that's alcohol. That's the right. place I can go to get right. something nefarious. And um, kids know that. They immediately know that if it's a blinking red light, hmm. it's going to, hmm. or whatever the movie is, it attracts them. And right. it's the forbidden fruit. We know that from Adam and Eve. So we need to be, so the rating system became a way of deceiving people. And back in, I'm going to meet the man who helped me do this. He was the head of a network. Tonight I'm meeting him for, for dinner. And he did a program like Entertainment Tonight talking about all the kids going to R-rated movies. And surprisingly, it was seen by a president named Bill Clinton. Ah. And he got concerned. Why? It was seen on a Sunday. He called all the theater owners to do a, a mass call on Monday to agree to card kids. Once they started carding kids, which they had not done before in 1998 or whatever, suddenly the box office for R-rated hit the bottom. Really? And that's why now our figures show that the more sex, the less money you make. The more nudity, the less money you make. The more violence, the less money. Hmm. Because... The biggest audience was always the kids' audience. Right. Parents don't go to movie generally. They watch it at home. Kids want to go to a movie yeah. because they want to date. They don't want their parents to see them dating. <laughs> they want to go to the movie theater. Yep. They can put their arm around their date. Right. You know, they, they don't have to talk because they don't know what to say. They can go out <laughs> to ice cream afterward and talk about the movie. Did you see that mm -hmm. scene? You know, so the, kids are the audience. And when you started carding them, you removed the audience. 14 to wow. 24 hmm. was a big audience. And um, the movie industry right now, last year, of the top 10, 80% were really strong Christian content. 70% um, of the movies overseas. And I've got all these statistics. So hmm. go to movieguide.org and you can get it. I love yeah. it. I have got an encouragement for you and then a question about... Uh, just kind of the current trends. Uh, we work with Native American young people. Excellent. And we uh, just this past year at our first year at uh, the On Eagles Wings Leadership Center where we got more time to equip them. One of the things we taught was entertainment choices. And I just want to encourage you that I we said, okay, choose something. Choose whatever movie you want. Check out Movie Guide. And we're going to talk about it. And so they kind of got into small groups, reported back on what they found. And one young man in particular changed how he views entertainment in a big way. Wow. He just even was mm. talking to me the other day of saying, I now know I, gotta, I have to look at these things and I have to see what's in it. And it was a huge heart change for me when I started using these resources. But so you're making a difference in Native America. I want you to know that. I love it. There <laughs> is uh, a lot of hope. In Native America now, because there are young people who are saying, "Praise God, I love Jesus, and I want to make a difference with my people." Um, I just want to ask you the trends in Christian media that you're seeing, and faith-based yeah. films and everything. They're obviously coming out at a more rapid pace. Doesn't mean they're all, you know, that they're all top-notch or whatever else. Not not criticizing them, but that's apart from kind of the number that are coming out what are some of the trends you're seeing that encourage you in some of the media that that's coming well out they're right getting now? better all the yes. time yeah. the, Amen. the quality of their work and 
you know, the Irwin brothers did a little interview like this at the NRB last year, and they said, well, thank you because you kept pushing us to do better, and, oh, and hmm. their films are more, you know, cohesive. The trouble is, and there's no trouble with Jesus Revolution, it's a good movie. Right. And the Kendricks Brothers movies, you know, yeah. Alex Kendrick used to oh, be yeah. my radio engineer. They're all getting better. Right. So I'm not complaining about it. But in Hollywood, 60 to 70% of a movie is marketing. And Hollywood spends $50 million a year on marketing. And my friend who's a left-wing commie pinko rat, Jeffrey Katzenberg, <laughs> that I love dearly, he, he lost control of DreamWorks because if he was going to pay $20 million to ABC to put on ads, who got the money? Disney, because they own ABC. If he bought the time on NBC, who got the money? Universal Pictures, because they own it. Hmm. Uh, if you do I on CBS, Paramount Pictures. So he was funding, with Shrek and everything, his enemy. Mm. I mean, his competitor. Maybe I should put that in more mm. gentle terms. <laughs> so when you're doing this, and most Christians don't even think about marketing, but I've seen movies that are really good Christian movies. They open to three or four million dollars. And meanwhile, London is falling, with, you know, which is Gerard Butler's mm -hmm. worst film yeah. in, a, in a pack of bad films. <laughs> There are a few of those. Made 110 million that weekend. Yeah. Now, yeah. why does that happen? Marketing. Mm. Disney, which some people don't like now, for a year is speaking to your children, saying Little Mermaid's coming out. Mm -hmm. You know. And the rule in marketing is that six months out, you want half the country to know about it. Little Mermaid's coming out, and then by the, the month before it opens, you want 90 percent. Well, Christians don't do that. Mm. I'm, I talk to people all the time. Oh, I didn't know Nefarious was coming. I didn't know Jesus Revolution. I didn't know about these movies. So we've got to get with the program. It's a business. There's a yes. way to run the business. And no matter how high quality, if nobody knows about it, nobody's going to go to the movie. That's good. Ted, we, uh, time flies when we have a great guest. I know. <laughs> and we know you've got other interviews yeah, today. I'm, I've got one soon. So let me ask you this last question here. Um, you are sitting, uh, we're in a podcast booth here, but yet when actually you are sitting across from a, a dad, their uh, mom who are listening right now, um, if you could look them in the eye and tell them one thing to encourage them about their choices, about especially they want their kids to be ambassadors for Christ, so much affects young people when they're growing up. What would you, you're looking them in the eye right now, you're encouraging them, what would you tell them? Well, the movies are getting, the Hollywood movies are getting more Christian. You know, if I told you there was a movie out about Satan trying to woo the bride of Christ and there's a movie where, there, where he's got a lake of fire and he's got sus people suspended above the lake of fire mm. and he's practicing with his little demons, his talk to the bride of Christ, you know, I'm going to be good. If you marry me, mm. I'm going to be great. I mean, this sounds like a biblical movie, like a it Christian. Does. But it, it made a billion, 200 million within four weeks. Oh that's Super goodness. Mario Brothers. Oh my God. Oh, that's oh my good goodness. Point. That's okay, now point. I just, I mean, I got to unpack that one for a little bit. I'll circle back <laughs> to, but now to you, listen now to that. You that's amazing. So, you know, we've been encouraging. We do the numbers. We give it to people at our gala. And we see more and more of them. Like, you know, one Jewish producer who's a friend, a close friend, God bless him. And um, he came to the gala. He was making big films, but, you know, some of them were pretty sleazy. One of them was simple, dumb and dumber. That's not clean 100 percent clean God. so don't worry about it but he um said i can make films for my kids now and he started making most of the hallmark movies and now he's making more most of the G gic movies we had a muslim who'd done 150 films and the number one film on abc uh miniseries he came to christ at the gala oh wow so we have a lot of people come to christ we have a lot of people who mm. change their attitude about what they're doing a friend of mine who's the one of the heads of um, netflix they hired a woman to be a Christian to be in charge of the films, and they hired a Christian to do those, not all the films, but some of the films to have strong Christian content and some of the uh, television, another woman for that, and I met with her. And they did Blue Miracle, which is 
Oh, yeah. One of the best movies of all time. Mm. So actually, we see these changes taking place. The average movie in Hollywood, if you think it's instant pudding, takes 13 years. Wow. Mm. And mm. you think about that. Top Gun, how long did it take yes. between the original... <laughs> You probably weren't born when the first Top Gun was out. I think just yeah, just I, by I a few don't. years. Yeah, yeah. There we are. Yeah, I remember uh, Tom <laughs> and now they and all bring it movies. out thirty six years later, thirty five, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. And same thing with Avatar. I mean, it took thirty years. Movies take a long time. Yeah. Mm. And they involve. And if can I go in one little more direction and then we better wrap it. I gotta I'd go. Love to. Um, the problem is that a a, a big budget movie let's say Dune, $200 million, you're orchestrating the whole movie. Uh, a lot of the Christian movies don't have those budgets. They have maybe a $3 million budget. Right, right. And they can't afford to take an extra shot. And you can't afford to do this. Sure. But what will happen is we go from an entertainment to melodrama. So Disney said for every tear you have to have a laugh. So in Bambi, when Bambi's mother mm. shot, the next scene is Thumper. It's funny. Mm. Because if you leave them down in the tier and the hospital bed, people get, my wife is on chemo. She watched, I watch a lot of Christian movies. They're in the hospital bed. You know, it's, it's, it's melodrama. Yeah. It becomes artificial. Right. So you need the money and you need to orchestrate the movie. You need to have laughs and all sorts of things. I mean, the scene in Super Mario Brothers where Satan is, you know, hanging people in front of the right. lake. Before. It's pretty funny, you know. Right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All that is funny, but you're not thinking about it at that time. Right. And and same thing with Guardians of the Galaxy. They actually, it's pro-life, it's anti-abortion, it's yeah. anti-manipulation. Mm. Yes. And, you know, they just wove, wove in and, and from Rocket goes to heaven and they say, there's somebody else controlling the universe, not this mad scientist. And yeah. it's not time for you yet. Ah, interesting. I'm still complaining about that because my wife died last year and I want to go and I can't understand mm. why God is. God, what are you doing here? Mm. He wanted me to be on your program. Now I can walk out and collapse <laughs> at an RV. Well, I, I will say Ted is way more up on the movies than I am right now. It's been a busy season, but this week we're in Orlando. I'm actually seeing both of these movies this week. Oh, I've seen um, them. Uh, yeah. Mario and... Um, that was a fun uh, and, movie. And, and we're also going to check out uh, the Indiana Jones movie, I think. So I have not. And Fast done. X. You've and, seen Fast X? Not I yet. Not seen it's it. the most Christian what? version they've done. Really? There's got to yeah. be writers. There's got to be some writers that are, are jumping in there. No, okay, we just so, tell them they can make more money. That's all. That's, there we go. So we, uh, the, the name of the program, Go Mad with Doug and Brad, um, my dad would say we'd be walking out the front door to school and he'd yell, People thought we were crazy. He'd say, go mad. Go, mad is make a difference. So go Amen. make a difference. And that's what we love about Movie Guide, about Ted Bear. Thank you Thank for you. making such a great difference in so many families. I'm going to pray for you real quick, and then you can run, all right? Heavenly Father, thank you for Ted. Thank you for his ministry. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if everyone views Movie Guide as a ministry, but it is, and yes. it's a ministry to us. It has uh, helped us along the way and helped our families, and we just pray that you would continue to have a hedge of protection around Movie Guide, around all those reviewers. We know it goes beyond Ted that there's people that are reviewing those that are seeking to see things the way you see them, yes. and we pray that you would continue to help them to be a voice that helps people learn discernment, not just a go see this, don't go see this, mm -hmm. but how to process it mm -hmm. and how to think through the entertainment choices they're making. We pray you'd be with Ted also. Um, we uh, you know we saw... Our dad just uh, with the loss of our mom years ago, and uh, that's hard. Um, and um, I can't imagine what all he's been through, and grief is a long journey, and we just pray for him as he continues to walk through that, yes, and that you'd just be very real, very close yes. to him, and that uh, you uh, we know you're close to the brokenhearted, and we pray he would feel that. We thank you for uh, him being with us today, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.